Hello, folks. I probably, yeah, I probably should do it. <laughs> we'll see. What's up, everybody? Ah, uh, just going live real quick to do some nice, quick culling and editing. So I figured I'd hang out with you all. Um, I probably should move my mic closer to my mouth. But let me know how it sounds for everybody. If it's bad, if it's good. Because if it's halfway okay, I might just leave it like this and not worry about it. What's up, everybody? Hello, hello. <laughs> I finally upgraded my internet a little bit, so I should have a decent and stable stream this time. Hopefully. We'll see. It's looking, uh, looking pretty strong and stable right now, which is nice because... I don't know what we were dealing with last time. And even though I upgraded it, it's still like barely better, which is stupid, but whatever. How do you edit your footage in Premiere Pro? I actually don't use Premiere Pro. Um, I use Final Cut. <laughs> your internet in the last stream was horrible. It really, it was so bad. Look, and I, I only upgraded, so 20 more dollars, right? I went from 200 down and 10 up to 400 down and 20 up. 20! That's not even like the best upload speeds, but it gives me a stable stream now that probably looks decent, so much, much better. What's up, James? James is in the house. He's always in there hanging out. Actually, I think James is a patron too, right? Get my patron, patron shout outs. Let me see, let me see. I can't remember. Or maybe he was at one point. Either way, he gives a shout out because he'd be in here. <laughs> How's life? Life is actually pretty good. Surprisingly enough, I know things are not the best in the world, so I hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's healthy, feeling good. I've been very lucky and blessed that, you know, things have been pretty smooth currently. Christina, she's another regular. Yeah. <laughs> Just got an XC3 a few days ago. Yeah, let's go. So these photos you're looking at right here, this was the XT4. I took these photos yesterday. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this stuff. So this was, I worked with this guy for some portrait headshots of himself. Um, and then his anniversary is coming up soon. This is his wife. They've been married for eight years now. So he was like, yeah, we're trying to get some anniversary photos too. And I was like, word, let's do it. So um, I'm actually gonna, let's hop into photo mechanic. Good morning from Texas. Working on an engagement session, awesome. It's always my favorite thing to do is um, edit my own stuff while I'm watching other people edit stuff. <laughs> it's like editing inception. Uh, select. I didn't think this through. I just blocked my whole setup. I can't see nothing now. There we go. <laughs> His name is not Dan. I know I messed up. <laughs> the funny part was for some reason the whole session too, I like kept wanting to call him Dan and I was like, but I know he's not Dan. I was like, what? what's wrong with me? How many cameras have you bought? Um, till now, how many cameras have I bought? So if you count every camera I've ever purchased, and then, you know, I sold a lot to get some. I had a Canon 6D. I had two of them, so I bought those. Um, then I had the Fuji X-T2, I had two of those. And then I had two X-T3s, an X-T30 and an X-T4, so eight cameras. So far in my, you know, photography career, I guess you could call it. <laughs> At the moment, I have four cameras because I have the X-T4, the two X-T3s, and my X-T30. So, and it's too many. I just have like, my whole room's a mess right now. You see, I just got, got controllers everywhere. Got my Xbox, I got my Nintendo Switch. I'm just 
stuff everywhere. I got some some product reviews coming up. I got this cool little LED light that I need to do a review on. Um, what else did I get? I got a monitor, a little screen monitor. That I need to do a review of that too. This little this little guy right here. I got so many, I just got stuff everywhere. It's so bad. Like y'all can't even really see how bad it is because there's just like boxes open everywhere because I've been unboxing stuff and just like over here like, oh, gotta get it. So Photo Mechanic always likes to start out by sorting my file name and that's not what I want. I want capture time because that's gonna put all the photos in order. This time I was actually only using one camera but typically I use two. I actually shot film last night. I broke open a roll of this Pro 400 Fuji if it's gonna focus will it nope because it wants to focus on my face yep it's not gonna focus good old 400 H I've actually never really shot it before so yeah we'll see how it turns out I'm also not like a film aficionado or anything but I used my my good old Nikon N80 since it gave me a more digital feel and went ahead and shot like that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, so let's let's jump in here and go ahead and start culling. Can't hate the autofocus on the XT30. Yeah, the XT30 is legit. That's why I'm having a hard time. Like I bought the XT4 to replace the XT30, but the XT30 is just so good. So I'm now I'm sitting there looking at it like I don't want you to go. I don't want to I don't want to lose you this should be a quick call because this was a short like hour session it wasn't very long the biggest thing for me is trying not to over call which I have a tendency to do most of the time Oh, and it was full on sunlight too. Oh, this is good. Ah, the hand placement though. I could clone out her hand, maybe? Is it okay if I buy an XT30 now in 2020? I think so. I'm actually gonna do a review on the XT30. XT30 is really good. It's one of my favorite cameras. I was actually just recommending it to one of my friends. He shoots film mainly, but needs a little digital camera every now and then. And I was like, bro, Fuji is what you need. Fuji's gonna be what you want. Look at that perfect dip. <laughs> I'm surprised I even caught that. <laughs> Hue adjustment in Lightroom CC for iPad has just got better. Have you tried it? I have. Um, I've used it also on the computer and I need to get used to using it because I'm just not used to using it at the moment. So I'll go about my normal edits and then be like, oh yeah, we have hue adjustment now. But I'll definitely get in the habit of using it more. These are so good. So autofocusing for these walking shots like this where I'm backing up with them, basically what I'm doing is I turn my camera, I can show you, I've, I've talked about it before. So basically what I'm doing, and at some point I'm gonna try and get like a camera cam so I can show y'all like a better close up with the camera. But basically what I'm doing on my camera is on the front here, you set it to C, so that's gonna be continuous autofocus. And then you switch your little square to zone. So you press the up on the little D-pad, go down to zone, and you'll get that little big square type of thing which, you know what, I'm about to turn off face detection, there it goes. So you get that square like that. 
And then basically when I hold down, I think it's this button here. So let me do it like this. You see how it's continually auto focusing. And so I'm using the back button focus with my zone and I have them inside the zone. And then I'm just shooting like that. So pretty straightforward. Last wedding I shot got super emotional. Even the cake was in tears. <laughs> I have a shoot today. Desert theme. Ooh, nice. Freaking out because I feel like shots like that, you just won't. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be super shadowy, but you should be fine in there. We got Indonesia in the house. What's up? Tips for golden hour. Honestly, I'm a big fan of finding shade all the time. So this is actually out of character for me, but it's all I had to work with was like straight up. And it's it's very like shadowy, but as long as you can get the light kind of coming from a single direction and not just directly on them, I think it's nice. Cause you see how they're kind of lit here from the left side. So all of our shadows are long going to the right. So obviously the sun is over there to the left of where the photo is right now. That's actually pretty decent. I usually like to get the shadows like that. And then another tip if you don't have shade is just make sure you're not posing them in a way where their own face is throwing shadows on the other person, which I probably did that as well. I'm a little rusty. I like don't shoot that often anymore. So I had the X-T4, I brought three lenses with me. The 23 F2, the 35 F2, and the 56. looking for that good stride to kind of show the motion. How many autofocus points do you have set on? I have the four 425, but when I do zone, I pick depending on how large, like the subject's gonna be in the frame. Hey man, great videos, thank you. Speaking of film photography, do you shoot or have, you tried shooting your old lenses with the adapter on in digital? Yes. I actually have a uh, video about that and how to set it up on your camera. Um, I do that all the time, actually, it's fun. Lomography art lenses? I've never used a Lomography. I didn't even know they were Lomography lenses. If I were to only buy an iPad or a MacBook Pro for editing photos and videos from an XT30, what should I get? So basically my opinion on the iPad, I absolutely love it for editing. However, if it's the only thing you have, I think you should go with a laptop. So basically the iPad works best as a companion kind of product. So I have a desktop computer at home. So instead of having a full laptop, I just have an iPad. And it works great that way because it has something else it can like restore stuff back to or sync it back to or something like that. An iPad by itself, um, it works, but it's a little scary in my opinion. And there's a lot of stuff that you just can't fully do or like back it up in a nice way. Um, it's just like everything gets kind of convoluted. So unless you have another computer, I would say get a laptop. iPads are great, I love them. But yet again, if you have a computer first, then an iPad's perfect. Same Rusty too. <laughs> yeah, it's like you haven't shot in so long and then you like get to a session, you're like, oh dang, like I forgot typically on a session like this, cause it was hot. I usually tell the couple to bring like a little towel or something so you can like, you know, dab off the sweat between shots. Nope, totally forgot to do that. Totally forgot how hot it was. You know, I was just kind of like, oh yeah, it's summertime. Well, yeah, I guess it's hot. I've been in the house this whole time. I have no idea what's happening anymore. So I was just kind of, just kind of there like, okay. I switched over to a sole iPad 2020 workflow with Pencil Magic Keyboard, haven't looked back. Wow, that's awesome, James. 
I can't even go out for clicking photos. <laughs> Country on lockdown, very strict. I mean, that's better than we're over here in America, just like everybody getting sick. Nobody cares. I mean, I'm I'm grateful that I'm able to still kind of do some sessions, which is nice. That's I like that one a lot. Cool, and that was it. Quick one hour session. Calling is super fast. Let's go ahead and sync these back up with Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do now, since I've already edited a couple of photos and I don't wanna lose those edits, we're gonna say four star is less than or equal to. So if my five stars and my edited ones aren't gonna show up, select everything, metadata, and then read metadata from files and that will update my star ratings let's see so many questions sorry if you already said this but what type of camera body do you have i have a couple um so the photos you're seeing here are the xt4 um the xt4 i bought mainly for videos so I only shoot it right now for stills when I'm doing a session that's like a small session and I don't need like my whole setup. Um, I also have two X-T3s, which that's what I'm using right here for my video camera. And then I have an X-T30, which right now gets no use because the X-T4 was supposed to replace that. We missed the whole session, it's hot now. <laughs> That's why I use checklists for everything in my life. I have a checklist. Yeah. Because, yeah, I was totally just like, man, I should have told them to bring something for sweat. That's like standard stuff. I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> what do you miss from Canon now that you've gone to Fuji? Nothing, <laughs> honestly. I mean, I will say um, I had the, I think it's the 100. Now, what lens is that? The Canon L is like 105 or something. I can't remember what it was. I love that lens so much. But other than that, honestly, I don't miss anything. With the biggest thing, and this is just mirrorless in general, that switch from an optical viewfinder to a uh, an EVF, the electronic viewfinder like changed my life. And any mirrorless camera will do that. Being able to see what you're actually getting in the shot is just like stupid. It's just like, <gasps> Before you go quickly, what application are you calling in? That was Photo Mechanic. Let me see if I can pull it back up again. Here it is. So this view is all the photos. And then when you double click on a photo, you can go through and call. The thing with Photo Mechanic is it loads in the like JPEG previews. So like you can call real fast and see how sharp the photos actually are. Like you can't go this fast in Lightroom and I can even I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse so like I can really get in there and just like scroll through photos real quick it's really awesome like out of all the programs yes you can call in Lightroom but doing it in photo mechanic makes more sense because it's, it's way faster like ridiculously faster all right cool so that's done so now we got all of our five stars here, and that is 85 photos. Some of them are doubled up and that's fine. I usually will call down at this point if I need to. Um, so sometimes what I like to do when I'm editing, so this is just one camera, so it's not as bad, but I'll sort it by metadata. So then I can edit by lens. So you see, I, I didn't even take that many 56 shots, but I know that all these were with the 56 and they're the same scene. So I can go ahead and select them all sync settings and boom and then know that those are all edited and then it looks like the exposure changed a little bit what do you think about the competition between sony mirrorless and fuji mirrorless it's honestly like a kind of small oh lightroom what are you doing 
um, it's like a very small competition. I feel like the biggest thing for everyone, everyone just sits there and harps on full frame. And, you know, I have my feelings on that. I really think what it comes down to is knowing how to use your camera. Like there's advantages to full frame, but I feel like a lot of, a lot of photographers nowadays, instead of like, figuring out the advantages and if those advantages are useful for you and your work they just assume that it's better so like everyone's just automatically like full frame is better period and that's not really the case there's a lot more factors to it so i think there's something about fuji that's just so much more fun to shoot with it just has a better feel. It's almost like my friend who shoots mainly um, film. He's borrowing an uh, X-T10 from someone. And he's just like mind blown at like shooting in JPEG and the photos he's getting straight out the camera. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's almost like the point of Fuji. One of the points is that you can shoot it very much like film. So if you're a film user mainly, it makes all the sense for you to switch to Fuji because you're getting basically the totally same feel from everything. Okay, so this shot's natural light, they're backlit. Obviously, they're too shady. Um, so what we're gonna do to start out is hit them off with some shadow save. But yeah, either way, I think, I think mirrorless in itself is good. I personally enjoy mirrorless more than DSLRs at this point. There's just a lot of advantages to it that I personally think helps photographers kind of work easier and not have to think about certain things while they're shooting, which is nice. Is your gear on kit updated or is it still shooting with the XT2? Nope, it is not updated. <laughs> I have not looked at kit in 50 years. I need to go and update that actually. Um, right now I have two XT3s, an XT4, and an XT30. The lenses are probably correct. Hey Santiago, what's up? Hello from the Philippines, Philippines in the house. So right now I'm just painting in some shadow save because they're backlit. Now the thing is with this, I don't like, I hate, I absolutely hate the HDR look. So I try to keep it looking natural. So even though they're backlit, I'm gonna brighten them up a bit, but not make it look crazy. Like, oh, look at them. You're pretty good with that brush, thanks. <laughs> so there's a little bit of shadow save. And what I'll typically do is brighten them up and then I'll go back and then we can start doing the shadows and the exposure of the whole photo. So you see like that's too much. So now we're gonna go back in our brush. If you click your little point, that's the last one you selected and you can make edits on that. Is shadow save under the brush tool? Yeah, so I've noticed some versions of Lightroom for some reason, they don't have all the different options. So you can make this stuff yourself, but um, sometimes the options are already built in. But I noticed like when I'll install a new version of Lightroom, if it wasn't coming from my last version, it has like totally different settings in there. So you could always like create your own. So one thing I've noticed about the X-T4 while I'm editing is that the photos come in with not as much magenta as I'm used to. So I'll put my preset on it and it just won't have as much magenta on it. So I'm curious why that is. Can you share your camera calibration? Are you talking about the, um, the color setting and everything? I'm getting X-T3 tomorrow, yeah. So yeah, here's the shot, here's before and after. It's a little bright, I might play around with the exposure. Obviously I should have exposed, underexposed a little bit more to save the sky some. 
but this is the natural fields preset on the xt4 yeah let's pull this exposure back and bring the shadows up a tad and then again uh them shadows are like irking me This next shot is the same scene, same lens. So we're just gonna sync those settings. Do you know at seventh era or Liam? I do not. I don't believe so. Yeah, so here's the shot without any shadow save. So you see on this one, it's a little heavy still. So let's go in and Let's dial those shadows back just a tad. I want to be able to see them, but I want it to look at least kind of natural. And you know what? I may be able to sync uh, local brush adjustments as well. Let's see how Lightroom did. How'd you do? Not so bad. And now I don't have to paint in the whole thing again. Just clean this up a little bit. Um, and let's pull these shadows just a tad. There we go. Hello from Costa Rica. Hello, hello, welcome. Is it okay to cut off the feet? I think so. Like, I don't know what everyone's whole ordeal with having shots have to be full body. Um, now, when it comes to cutting off their feet like this, this is something you should try not to do. Um, I am a fan of like, if it happens in the shot because of just how the shot was being taken and that's how it is, that's fine. Um, I'm not over here trying to take perfect photos all the time. For me, the feeling and the emotion of the photo matters more than like perfect composition and perfect, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not in a studio, so I'm not gonna shoot like I'm in a studio. Um, and I mean, you know, some people may be like, oh, you suck because of that, and that's fine. Um, you know, I'm, I'm okay with whatever judgment I get, but for me, this is the focus. This right here is the photo. I didn't even notice those people back there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I kind of I like having a lot of headroom in my photos like this and I don't think you always need to see people's feet Like the focus is them just because you see their whole body. I don't know. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I mean Their whole feet are here, but it's obviously like the grass and stuff Do 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 today my internet is going crazy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the one time I have decent internet, <laughs> and now your internet's going crazy. <laughs> I'm asking about Lightroom's camera calibration. Oh, okay, yeah. So for Lightroom, hold on, let me sync this stuff real quick. Turn off local brush adjustments. And then unselect this one. So camera calibration. I usually turn that on in a Fuji Fine Picks 100. For some reason, so Fuji inside the camera, it's saying that it adjusts for the lens and any type of vignetting and stuff. But you'll see with it off, like I feel like there's a, you can almost see it warping a little bit and the bit of kind of vignetting happening. Or either I'm just stretching my photos out. I can't tell, but I usually put on the fine picks and it, it looks good to me, so. Shadows up, exposure down. So good. The X-T100, I don't know much about it, honestly, but I wanna use one, because it looks like a good little like carry around camera. Um, maybe I'll use one someday. Any tips 
to get faster at culling weddings. I feel like sometimes it takes longer than editing. So personally for me with culling, I use what I like to call the yes method. So instead of worrying about getting rid of photos, I concentrate on only what feels good. What initially hits me as yes, that's a good photo. I keep the thinking down to a minimum. I don't think about anything else. If I immediately go, yes, that's good, then I pick it. And that's my first criteria. And then I go as fast as I can using that yes mentality, which is why sometimes I overcall because I'm just going through being like, yes, 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 yes. And sometimes in the same scene, I'm choosing photos that basically are all the same and I'm just like saying yes about it. So that, that would be my tip for calling. Um, and don't, don't worry too much about like what photos are perfect or which ones you need for this or that. Just, just call it because yeah, calling should not take longer than the editing at all. Like it, it really shouldn't. Hopefully that helps if that makes sense. Um, I'm about to call another session in a second, so I can show you if you're gonna stick around for a little bit. Do 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 do. I have an XC3, and I wonder if it makes sense to upgrade to the XD4 and use my XD3 as a B camera. I'm getting more videography from photography. Yeah. So David, if you're doing more video, definitely upgrade to the four. As far as a video camera, um, the stabilization on this thing is ridiculous. Um, the video options are really good. It's just set up better for video. You can um, save video to both SD cards, which you couldn't do before. Or you can like F-log to one and then also to the other. You can't do that stuff on the three. So if you're mainly doing video, I would say yes, upgrade to the X-T4. Now, if you're still mainly doing stills, the advantages to the X-T4 are awesome, but I don't believe they're worth upgrading unless you just have the money and you want to. You know, like if you just want to upgrade, that's great. Because for stills, the main thing you're getting out of this is battery life. The battery life of this thing is dumb. Actually, I shot it last night and yeah, I'm still full bars. So I shot this whole session y'all are looking at. It was about an hour and some change. Still full bar battery. Didn't even touch the battery. The battery's like, ha ha. Um, so yeah, if you want better battery life and a faster shutter and a quieter shutter, then upgrade for stills. But if not, if that doesn't matter, then I say stay on the X-T3. I still personally stay on the X-T3. I only got the four yet again for my main video camera and I'm only using it for stills now when I'm just like, oh, let me go shoot it. Just so I like know more about it. So when I do a review or something. I'm primarily a Nikon shooter, D750, but I'm looking for a good daily carry camera that also does super well for video. The X-T4 and the X-T3 has sure come out, yeah. Why don't you make <laughs> a gaming channel? So I would love to make a gaming channel. I really would. Like I play games every day, almost a little bit too much, but, um. It just, it's not gonna make money. And I don't, I don't have the, I have three kids and I'm the main, the sole income provider in the house. Um, so I just, I don't have time to do it. I don't, I have all this other stuff going on unless I stop doing weddings altogether and then just do photo and games, but I don't have the time for it. I, I wish I did. <laughs> It'd be awesome to be able to play games and stuff. How good is Fujifilm for street photography? The best in my opinion. Like it's so good. And it's mainly just cause it's small. And like I said, again, the only thing I don't like about the X-T4 is the flip out screen. This is this is much more of a video thing. Um, when you have, where's my X-T3? You know, when, you, when you're chilling with your X-T3 and your street photography and you don't want people to see you and you know, you flip your little thing out like this and you can just look down at it at the shoulders, kind of glance at it, take your shots. Like no one even knows you're taking pictures, it's good stuff. Hey, have you tried to use a full frame camera? 
If yes, how does it compare with your Fuji setup? If no, why not? So yeah, I started on a Canon 6D, which is full frame. Um, as far as the comparison to my X-T3, there's not much of anything I feel like I'm missing. Um, a lot of people always talk about the bokeh and all that stuff. And I mean, that's, that's a real thing to be concerned about. I kind of want to see what that looks like in black and white. But as far as like, how does it do in like low light settings and stuff? It's fine. It's, I don't, I don't know. I'm not over here missing anything from my photos. Even when you look at my old photos, they're like, they're really not that different. What shutter speed do you use to shoot your wedding's portraits? Um, it ranges. It really depends on the light. Like, it really depends. Like, this day, I had a lot of light. So, yeah, my shutter speed is way high. ISO is super low. My wife brought me a little gift. I'm about to... I'm sorry, y'all. I'm about to do this on stream. It's happening. It has to happen. Um. Mm. Yeah, that was generally where everything was for the shoot it looks like really high shutter speed really low ISO because I had the light what's your kid's name uh, yes I do have a John Branch the fifth <laughs> but I, I have three kids did I call this mini from them walking Sometimes I like to give my couples a little bit more too, just because. So let's sync all this. Why not iPad editing? I don't have a good way to show it right now, um, but I do my iPad, yep. My iPad's right here, I'm hanging out. But, um. I'm also, I'm using, I have this stuff syncing. So you can see it in here. <clears throat> There's the session. <clears throat> so yeah, just not editing on the iPad right now. I tend to be faster when I'm on the computer. What monitor are you editing on? Don't see it in the build area. This is the BenQ PD3200Q. <clears throat> oh man, I'm like choking on something. The exposure is a little too hot on these. Oh, you know what I should be doing? So I, I'm doing a review on this thing too, the tour box, and I'm still getting used to it. What I should be doing is actually editing with this thing, but it doesn't look like it's even installed right anymore. Let's see, software, windows. Oh, that's right, but I'm not, okay. You know what? We're not, we're not gonna do that right now. What's your thought on the EOS R5 and R6? I haven't looked into them enough yet, but from like the tiny bit I did see, they look beasty. 
And yet again, I'm a fan of mirrorless in general, so them Canon mirrorless, this they're sounding pretty legit. But yet again, it's it's nothing that I'm over here like, oh no, now I need to switch my whole camera system because they have like one feature better and it's full frame. Like, I don't know. My photos are good. I like my photos. They're fine. I like Fuji. I enjoy shooting it. Like, I actually like the shooting it. It's fun. Also, I will soon buy Nikon Z6. Are, is the natural feels good for that? Yes, natural feels is good on any camera. Um, I did a stream a while back where I showed me editing the natural fills preset on like a different wide variety of cameras. And yeah, it works just fine on all of them. If anything, like depending on the tones of the camera, you may wanna switch up the tones just a little bit as far as your white balance. But other than that, they're like basically the same. So they're all fine. Oh no, don't do that light. I'm so happy I can actually stream for once. Y'all, this is like changing my life forever. Okay. There we go. Yeah, and it's like I can I can actually stream. I'm like mind blown right now, y'all. <laughs> Does paper like on iPad change the colors or is it still using so my paper light got scratched. Um so I took it off and I ordered another one and I haven't seen it in forever. Which is unfortunate because I see a lot of people, you know, um being sponsored by paper like but they've taken like over a month to even ship my thing. And I understand that like COVID's kind of messing up everything. But I was just like, really guys, it takes that long? Which were the lenses you had when you had a Canon? So I used mainly the Sigma lenses. So I had the Sigma 50 art, which I loved. I loved that lens so much. Now that I think, what? Did, oh yeah, I did have a wide lens. So yeah, I had the 50 art. I had the Sigma 24 to 35 which I typically don't use zooms. So that lens was less of a zoom and more of like three primes, which is how they marketed it. Um, I had the Canon, what was it, 105? I think that's all I had. Yeah, the 24 to 35 Sigma art, the 50 mil Sigma art, and the 105 Canon L. I don't remember any other lenses. Yeah, I don't remember having any other lenses. <laughs> Is the 16 2.8 good enough for wedding low light since I cannot afford the F 1.4? Yeah, I use the 16 2.8 and I'm fine with it. It's definitely dark. Um, it, it obviously doesn't let in as much light and you need to know how to deal with that. So if you're not sure you're going to be able to handle having a 2.8 at a reception and knowing how to use your flashes to make up for that, you may want to just save your money for the 1.4. But overall, yeah, it's fine. I use it. Let me, I'm going to hit this. About to scoot out of frame and hit this sushi real quick. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Oh no, my keyboard is dying. A 
so going back to the gaming channel stuff I just got on the beta of uh, Genshin Impact, which is like a like an MMO RPG. It's not really an MMO, but it's a very like anime RPG, and it's on iOS and Android, and also on the PC. And it's coming to Sony or the PlayStation, I think. So I've been playing that beta a little bit, which is kind of cool. Animal Crossing just had this update, so you can swim in the water now, which I need to check that out. So yeah, I'm, I'm up on the gaming. I just don't have time for it. Once you're finished editing a full set, do you deliver it to your clients right away or do you check the set again the next day to see if you... Nope. I, I do usually just deliver it. Especially when it comes to wedding photography. Like, it's too many photos to be like, well, I wonder what the photos look like. I, I wonder if... I, I want to make sure I like them. Like, no. I, I edit the thing. It looks the way I like. It's good. And I mean, yeah. There's disadvantages to that. Because I'll admit, I'll go back and look at some of my edits sometimes. And I'll be like, oh. Like, this one shot is, like, way too magenta. Like, what was I doing? Um, so there's advantages and disadvantages to being fast. But overall, I'd rather... You know, I'd rather get the photos to my couple. And I'm not rushing. It's more so I just like to be efficient about everything. But you see, like, natural fills preset on this without any white balance. And it's, like, way green. There's, like, not enough magenta. It's weird. And that's only the XD4. It just it looks different. It's not like a problem. It's just there's not as much magenta for some weird reason. And just so the sushi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was so hungry. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Do you have your monitors color calibrated? I do not. Um, so these are the BenQ PD3200Q. The, the color on them is pretty accurate. I could, if I wanted to be more, you know, like very specific about things, I could go ahead and get it calibrated, but it's, pretty accurate yeah this is why I like editing with the same scenes like that because you see I edited one and then sunk, sunk the rest of it and it was just like okay there you go how did you start learning Lightroom self-taught yeah I am mainly self-taught honestly I can't remember learning it like when I learned it and where and how um I just kind of started using it at one point um I'm also I'm the type of person who likes to do beta tests and stuff of new software and things and because of that i'm very used to like jumping in something i don't know and being like what's this what's this what's this and just playing around with it i can remember um when i was doing a lot of music production and stuff um you know like learning fruity loops or learning ableton like i just i learned all that stuff by myself so I just, I have a knack for kind of being in the zone of figuring out what's going on in a program. See y'all, I do the rule of thirds sometimes too, okay? Everyone always hates because all my photos are center focused. <laughs> do you shoot your videos S-log? I do not. Um, color grading is cool. But it is too much. I ain't got time for that. Um, the colors coming out the Fuji look awesome anyway. So I don't see the point of color grading. Um, not that I don't see the point. I know the point. It's just like for a little whatever YouTube video. I'm not going to sit here and color grade it. And I'm going to make it look good in camera and call it a day.
Eterna. I, I usually shoot classic chrome. I do everything classic chrome. What you see here, this is classic chrome right here. I don't know, it has such a nice, like, it has that flatness that Eterna has too, but there's something about it that I just really like. This is too... Actually, this is what, this works because they're so far away, but this is exactly what I was talking about. You see the light is coming from the right. So he's like blocking her all in shadow. And then his back is lit, so you mainly see like his back. But yeah, just jump into Lightroom, play around with it, and then when you can't figure out something or you're like, hey, how do you do it? Whatever, you know, jump on YouTube real quick. There's probably someone with a video about it. Do you have a Discord group? I do not, but I'm thinking about maybe doing one at some point. Um, if I do it, it will definitely be through Patreon. So it'll be people who sign up through Patreon will have immediate access to me and other folks and we can share our photos and be friends because <laughs> right now a lot of people are hitting me up through instagram but it takes me 50 years to get back to them and i apologize if you're sitting here watching the video like yeah man i just hit you up the other day i'm sorry <laughs> i try my best so many people be hitting me up Any tips on posing your couples? So the main thing I look for in my poses with my couples is their interaction and their comfort. I like to have them interact with themselves rather than interacting with the pose that I'm trying to get them to do. If I concentrate too much on the pose, which some people, unless they're models, they have a hard time and then they start getting weird because they're like, eh, am I standing right? Am I doing, what am I, huh? I can't, uh, um, so yeah, that's the main thing with the posing. Then after that, it's just about really, um, I don't know where their bodies are and how the interaction looks. There's a couple of go-to poses I have at this point. Like there's a bunch of them. And if you've followed my work enough, you'll probably see it. I might do a video on it too. Kind of like my go-to poses. Do you shoot aperture priority or all manual? So I do all manual. When I started, I did do aperture priority because especially when you're new to photography, what, I can't sync? Why is the sync setting not on? Oh, okay. Um, when you're first starting, I don't know, it's a lot to think about because you're, not only are you thinking about, you know, where am I, what is the light doing? What is my couple doing? How am I personable? How am I talking to my couple? How am I posing my couple? And then you're also being like, okay, cool. How's my camera working? How's my camera seeing the light? What settings do I, it's just a lot. So when I first started, I was aperture priority because on the camera end, all I had to do was go, cool, where's my aperture? Where's my ISO? Set my ISO where I wanted it and then set my aperture where I wanted it and I'm usually fine. But um, I just found after a while, it started doing weird things. And it just didn't really, you know, it didn't really work out the best. So I switched to doing all manual so that I could be in control of everything. And the more you get used to it too, which is why like after a while of aperture priority and kind of understanding what your camera's trying to do, once you've gotten used to it, it gets easier to set your settings. It's not something that you're like sitting there doing math calculations trying to figure out. Cause you know you can you can know the um, the little triangle the exposure triangle, but until you understand it in a full working way, like a real life examples, I feel like you don't you still don't totally get it until you're realistically like oh yeah. So generally, what I'm doing when I'm setting up for lighting in general is my ISO is the first thing I always think about and the ISO is always the base I don't like to change my ISO every 50 seconds the ISO should pretty much stay in the same place 
unless the lighting drastically changes. So like I'm outside and it's slight overcast and I can see my light and it's even all around. And I go, cool, okay, I'm gonna set my ISO at like 400 or something, depending on how it looks. Um, and obviously the lower you can get your ISO, the better, but on the same end, it's not that big of a deal if you're not shooting at ISO 100 all the time. People make it sound like, bro, you gotta get, that's what, at the end of the day, take great pictures and do whatever you have to do to get the great pictures. Your cameras can handle a lot of things. So yes, ISO 100 is the best, but sometimes we're not gonna have perfect scenarios. So always putting yourself in a position to try and have to shoot at ISO 100, I think is limiting. I tend to stick around like 400, 500 ISO. The only time I go low like this in this session where I'm at ISO 200 is because it's like dead broad daylight and there's sun all over the place and it's just mad bright. So at that point, it's like, cool. But again, so set your ISO base. So say, cool, I'm in this room, I see the light, 500 ISO is good. And then after that, aperture for me is only about how much shallow depth of field I want. So generally, I'm just gonna shoot wide open. Um, if I need to stop down because I want things in focus, I'll do that. But that's the only reason I'm ever changing my aperture. Or like the rare occasions where it's super bright and I need to like stop down because it's just too bright, but that's rare. So usually I'm not messing with aperture. So then the only other thing that changes, which changes often is the shutter speed. So I'm typically using shutter speed to figure out and control my light. But yet again, if it's getting too dark, you don't wanna go too low on your shutter because then you get motion blur from people when they move. But yeah, ISO first, aperture usually stays wide open and then I change my shutter all the time. That's kind of that's kind of how I got used to doing manual. I think you said you were using prime lens. There are times when it would have been nice to if you had the seventy, the fifty to four one forty. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've I've gotten so used to primes at this point that it's rare. It is super rare that I'm ever like, oh, I wish I had a zoom lens. Okay, so these are all the shots of the twenty three. These are all edited and done. So now we're gonna hit these 35. Yeah, like these are all the same. There's no point in having all those. Yeah, it's, it's like, the only time I would wish that I had a zoom lens is if I was in a situation where I was using like one lens <clears throat> on one camera and I couldn't move around a lot but other than that I, I enjoy primes much better I'm just 14 so I can't support you on patreon <laughs> can you please make a discord account yeah we'll we'll see we'll see I'll try I'll try and hit you up you'll hear about it what happened here? The exposure? So here was my base. Let's center them up a bit. Yeah, I, I wish I had the time for a gaming channel though. I really do. <laughs> my wife would be mad if I was over here making money streaming playing video games, she'd be like, man, you just sit around and play games all day, and I'd be like, yep, and it pays the bills, so, <laughs> let's see, their skin is looking a little, yeah, I might have to do it on these other photos too, so I'm just pulling back the saturation on the oranges, oranges like, that orange reddish area is gonna always be your skin tone. If your skin tones are looking wonk, it's probably cause something's too orange. If you're good at doing something, never do it for free. True, uh, to a degree. I, I don't mind doing free work, but yes. If you're good at something, get paid for it. Get out there and get paid. I think I'm gonna black and white this one. If 
you weren't shooting wide open with your prime, your skies would not be blown out. That is correct. However, the couples would be way too dark. So that would mainly be lighting. Like I would need flashes and stuff if I wanted to not blow out the skies. Which I generally don't like. I use natural light most of the time. So I would either need a reflector or flashes, which I tend to not use either, so. But yeah, it's all it's all stylish, stylistic choices. I don't mind the blown out backgrounds. Cause for me, like, I don't know, I have a hard time with a lot of like the fill flash photos cause it just doesn't look natural to me. Like with your own eyes, personally, if you if someone's standing with light behind them, they're gonna be in shadow. So to me, it, it just looks weird looking at a photo where the person is like perfectly lit and the sky is perfectly exposed. And it's just like, you, you don't ever see things like that. And I don't, I don't like things looking so artificial. That's also why I don't like HDR. It's just like, it's so, like you can tell you sat, and you know, I'm not knocking anyone for the style. Everyone has their own style and you know, Photography and art is all subjective. I just personally, I just don't like it. Like if you could expose for things in your eyes, this is what it would look like. The sky would be blown out and they would be lit up. That's just how it works. So that's my personal take on it. But I do understand the biggest thing that I hate and please any natural light photographers, don't do this. You need to understand though. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I understand that my skies are blown out because I'm using natural light and I'm exposing for the couple. And I understand that if I had a flash to do fill flash or a reflector to fill them in, I could pull my exposure down, brighten them up with the flash and have my skies still exposed correctly. I understand that. If I absolutely had to do it, I could. Um, and that's my biggest thing with a lot of photographers is people run around and be like, I'm a natural light photographer. And it's like, that's cool, but you should at least still learn flash because you don't know when you're gonna need it or when you might need it. So practice at least with it, understand what it is and then say, you know, I enjoy this style better, but I do understand what you're doing and I understand why people do it and blah, blah, blah. So that's that's the biggest thing for me is like making sure that I actually take the time to learn and do the work and not just use being a natural light photographer as like a crutch to not learn flash. You know, like that's that's not how it works. We're photographers, we need to understand photography. We need to understand light. And using flashes is a part of understanding light. Cause yeah, like this, they're sitting in shade. I knew this whole sky was gonna be gone. You know, like I was not keeping that at all cause they're shitting, sitting in shade. Like I can, let me see if I can show you the before. You know, like I'm exposing for them cause they're in the shade. So like, yeah, the sky is gone. <laughs> it's it's all the way just bloosh, blown all the way where can i buy preset for fuji let me get my preset for y'all and remember it works for anything it's not just fuji but it particularly works well on fuji because obviously that's what i use Do, 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 bring it back with the highlight tool and then edit photo for masking i mean this this is totally blown out i don't think i can save that there's a couple like or like these photos and so what my mentor tends to do he underexposes so that he can save the skies so he'll take a photo like this that looks like it's supposed to be a silhouette but then he'll be able to like pull up exposure and shadows and save them a bit. It's a little rough, but you know, underexpose a bit so you can save the couple and still have your skies. So that's another approach to everything as well. Let's see. Okay, I'm not gonna keep so many of these either. So we're gonna get rid of these. 
I just have 35 F2 and an XH1. Tomorrow I'll shoot a couple session. How do you think? Oh, awesome. That's mainly what I was using here. Just a 35 F2. I love that lens. It's so good. So good. What is that, a bug? Oh, I had the hardest time. This hill was like a weird slope and I couldn't get the horizon straight and it was irking me the whole time. There are 39 watching, but only 10 likes. <laughs> Why? Where are my likes? Don't you love me? <laughs> is the XT4 full frame, it's still crop. Still crop sensor. I feel like Fuji has found their like niche. They're like, you're either crop sensor or you're medium format. There's, They're not gonna touch full frame. And they're gonna be the best crop sensors on the market and also really good medium format. And I'm dying to try out that GFX 100. I want to I want to shoot it so badly. I've been getting all my business through word of mouth, but with this C19, I've lost it all. Oh, dang. Do you know other ways you can get clients or how you should do it? All wedding events are closed now. Yeah, it's <sighs> this year has been rough. Um so I found Instagram actually to be a really good place to get clients. Um, probably one of the best, honestly. So if you're looking for another place to just like advertise or put your time in, you should definitely check out Instagram. I get a lot of my work from Instagram now. Um, also word of mouth. Um, That would be my biggest suggestion. Don't do something like the Knot. I actually just canceled my Knot account. The Knot was the best for me for the last couple of years, but recently it hasn't been good at all. And it cost a lot of money, so I wouldn't bother, especially if you're not getting a bunch of work. Free giveaways. That might work too, like, if you do a, yeah, I've seen photographers do that, do like a free engagement or something with your booking, or just do like a drawing for a free engagement, and then everyone who signs up, hit them back up and be like, yo, y'all can get a discount rate on like a full wedding, and discount it a little bit for them, because yet again, some work is better than none at all. Still crop, but the quality is like full frame, I think. Yeah, I'd agree. The The only thing you're losing is like the depth of field and bokeh at the same focal length or whatever. There's, there's a lot of videos about it. Like everyone always talking about how there's more bokeh. It's kind of backwards because if you get closer to your subject, you'll get more bokeh. So it's kind of like, so you know, shot for shot, same focal length. Yeah, there's going to be more bokeh on the full frame. So like if I have a 35, which is like a 50, and someone else is full frame with a 50 and we're standing in the same spot, they're gonna have more bokeh in theirs. That's just what it is. But um, most of the time too, and this is why I hate the whole full frame versus crop. People like always just sit there and talk about the bokeh and all that stuff. But if I showed you photos and you had no context, you probably would have no idea. And they'd be like, wow, that photo is so great. And I'm like, yeah, it was crop sensor. And they're like, Whoa. I mean, I shot for the New York Times. I have two two photos in the New York Times newspaper on crop sensor Fuji. They don't care. Nobody cares. <laughs> like, is your photo good? That's what matters. So it's just funny watching photographers sit here and like, <laughs> full frame crop? Oh, you're not shooting full frame? <laughs> Are you getting paid? Are you getting work? Does your work look good?
I'm not knocking your style. It's just I've been Phil Flash for all my photos. Yeah. Yet again, to each their own, and I'm cool with that. You know, you could look at this and be like, I hate how he blows out all his skies. That's fine. You know? And I, I'm not mad at that. I love the fact that we can all have our own opinions and whatever. Because there's people style that I don't like, and I'm just like, yeah, there's things about what you do I just don't like. And that's fine. You're still a cool person. You're still a great photographer. It's just a different style. It's like drinking your coffee black or drinking it with cream and sugar. It's still coffee. <laughs> you know? I've lost all my work this year. Every contract canceled. Oh, God. I'm so sorry to hear that. That is the worst. I, I luckily... I haven't had everything canceled, um, but I've had a lot of couples reschedule, and I've been very lenient and nice about the process and being more humanistic about it than I am like business savvy. So I've been letting my couples reschedule without charging them extra. So my 2021 is already like full. Like I have barely any dates for 2021 anymore. But you know what? You know, I, I do this for the couples. It's the main reason I'm in wedding photography. So it's kind of, it made sense for me to, you know, work with the couples in this really just overall sad time for everybody. Rather than being like, you need to pay me because I'm losing dates for next year. And I'm not getting any more payments this year. So yeah, anyone else who are wedding photographers in the chat right now, you know, I feel for y'all because I know exactly what's happening. So many, so many events are just like, yep, can't do it. A lot of my couples have been, they're either staying on contract and then doing a small elopement and then want to do a bigger party next year, which is another reason why I'm losing so many dates too. Do you use your mouse for masking in Photoshop? Nope, I'm just, just a mouse. Or, there that was the question. Yes, I'm using a mouse. <laughs> um, when I use my iPad, I do prefer to use the pencil. It's quite nice. So here I'm gonna pull the shadows down and get them a little bit more silhouette. I don't like making them black like this. It just looks unnatural. Yet again, I don't like things to look unnatural. Like, all the photographers out there doing like Photoshop craziness, it's cool, but I just, I don't like it looking too unnatural. I try to keep it at least slightly realistic looking as far as how light reacts. So there's not enough light and it's not underexposed enough for them to be straight black silhouettes. So I just darken it a bit. How to show image and develop help me not showing to my Lightroom, what? You're not able to develop your photos, I'm, I'm guessing. I've been watching videos for time on shooting weddings, it's helpful. I have my fourth wedding in about two weeks, yeah! Congrats on that. Photograph AKC dog shows. On the East Coast of the United States, all the shows have been canceled. Oh. oh, no. You've been doing it for 20 years in the first year without... That's the worst. Oh, no. Yeah, there's so many things that have been canceled recently that's just like, wow. Like, these shows usually always go on, and it's just like all these big shit, like Comic-Con and all... All the big events, like, I, 2020 is, like, done. I've already, you know, thrown thrown it all away. 2020 is over. Let's see what 2021 brings. Uh, can I name my mouse? This is the Logitech MX Master 2S. I use it when I'm on the Windows side of my computer. And then when I switch... To the Mac side because it's a Hackintosh 
I just use a normal magic mouse. So I have two mice that I like flip back and forth between. So that's how I'm using uh, Final Cut for all my video editing. And the reason I use Windows for all my Lightroom stuff is because, you know, Hackintoshes are technically you're not supposed to do that. They're not really like stable systems. Like they are stable, but if something happens, I can't go call Apple and be like, hey, my Hackintosh broke. So this is paid client work and I don't want anything to happen to it because I'm over here like, you know, like tinkering with my computer <laughs> or whatever. Hey, I lost your whole wedding because I'm tinkering with my computer. Like, yeah, that's that's the best answer. That's what every couple wants to hear. Change the pick to black and white. I thought about it, actually. I feel like I don't... It'll be a cool black and white, but it, it's gonna be kind of empty. There's nothing happening, you know? If there was like a bunch of clouds and stuff, it'd be a dope black and white. But like, this is just gonna be like, okay, black and white, yay. And we'll see if it's black and white though, I can, now I can silhouette them harder because it's already black and white. And, you know, and then now because of that, I wanna go in and do exposure on the cloud or something. I don't know. I don't know. Save the sky. Ah -ha -ha. I guess I could highlight save. Let's see, highlights. So what I'm doing here is um, when you hit O, you can see where you're painting and then I hit it again so I can actually make my changes. So I mean, yeah, it's a cool black and white, but there's, there's not a lot going on, so. Thanks, every time I get a wedding, they're always last minute. Yeah, that's what's going on right now too. And I think a lot of photographers need to pivot into doing elopements and be fine with that be fine with doing little small weddings that aren't like a big ordeal and just get them in. Cause yet again, it's nice to make money rather than being like, oh no, I'm not booking my three, $4,000 weddings anymore. It's like, yeah, you're, you're probably not gonna book those. So, you know, book your $1,000, six hour, whatever. Yes, I'm using a paid version of Lightroom. I really enjoy watching you work and the interaction, how often you do. Um, I, I don't have a schedule right now for my live streams. I usually only do it when I have some work that I need to get done. It actually, y'all help me get my work done because while I'm sitting here, I have to edit. Um, whereas if it's just me, it's easier for me to slack off and start like playing a video game or something. <laughs> but like, let me pick up this Animal Crossing. Um, so I like to stream when I have to work because it gives me an incentive to to keep going um, But I I might start making it a scheduled thing and doing like, you know once a month or twice a month or something Sixteen two point eight. I like it. I have one I own it and you probably can't see it, but it's up there it's not too bad. It's a little dark. That 2.8 sometimes, you know, I'd be wishing I could let in a little bit more light, but other than that, I liked it. It's a good lens. Can you save the live stream? Yes. The live streams usually stay up on YouTube, so you can check them out there. Someone is calling me. Let me see if this is important, guys. Give me one second.
Hello, I'm back. You should make a podcast. Uh, someone, someone talked to me about that once, actually. Maybe I'll get in there sometime, get my podcasting in. How about your job when this pandemic is going on? So for me, um, I have been very blessed in the fact that I, this year, or at the end of 2019, I decided that I was going to mainly focus on YouTube. And so because of that, I didn't book as many weddings as I normally would. Because remember, last year I did 40 weddings. So the one advantage of me not taking as many weddings is that I had a lot of dates that my couples could reschedule to, which has been a huge help. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm I'm doing okay on YouTube, surprisingly. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of work, but honestly, it's less than weddings. And I'm not getting as much money as I do at weddings, but it's enough to pay my bills, which is nice. Um, and then I've been doing a lot more education speaking at workshops and stuff um i shot for the new york times twice now which pays pretty decent as well so yeah i'm i'm holding it down the biggest thing so i'm the main income in my household my wife doesn't work she does the housework with the kids which is the hardest of work not saying she doesn't work she saves us a lot of money by either saving money on groceries and stuff or finding good deals or just the fact that she's with the kids all the time too and we don't have to put them in daycare and all that kind of stuff um so that's a huge advantage as well but yeah doing okay this year i've done a couple of shoots that's been going well i've been able to do small weddings because here in north carolina they're letting people do events but like very small and you have to wear masks and all of that so you know, I've been doing that. I've been following all the rules. And yeah, it's, it's been going pretty well. Like I said, I, I'm very, very blessed this year because it's been hard for a lot of people. And, you know, it's, it's the worst. And my heart and thoughts go out to everyone because it is not fun. It is not a fun year at all. Thanks again. I got to go look at the photo mechanic. I'm a subscriber as well. Thank you so much, Rob. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and stuff, too. What time is it in South Carolina? Uh, it's 1.45. Should visit India. Oh, yeah. I would love to go over there. Can you suggest lenses for the X-T3 to shoot a wedding? Um, I'm a prime-only shooter. If you're going to get anything, get the 56. The 56 is amazing. Um, I also love the 23 and 35 f2. Those are some of my favorite lenses. Y'all, this is crazy. I have like, I have decent internet. Actually, YouTube is now mad at me because I'm sending him too much information. We recommend that you use a stream bit rate of 45. I'm over here like 10,000 kilobits. <laughs> Take all this data. This is a good. This is a nice, nice, good classic photo. I like it. I can't tell if that's a pimple. That's always the hardest part. Like, I don't want to be over here editing and changing people's faces. Let's see. If I can find her on Instagram you know like if that's how your face is that's cool and I want you to you know I want you to be you I don't want you to think that I'm just over here being like well, yeah let me change your face I think, yeah, I think that is just a pimple. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's get rid of that. Just got back from scouting the area for a shoot later. Awesome. Desert theme. Shade with a challenge. That's going to be awesome. But yeah, shooting in that broad daylight.
Come on, Lightroom. So now that I know that, I don't know how many photos I'm actually gonna go through and do it, but I'm gonna try and just knock that out real quick in some photos. Do 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 do. This one has a little bit too much tilt going on. That's another thing I'm not a fan. I, I don't like Dutch tilt at all. I just don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you shoot a couple with wide set aperture and get them sharp? So one advantage of crop sensor that no one talks about is that your everything is like because of the crop aspect or whatever that's called, um, you're getting a little bit more out of your lens. Like so, the 35 f2, which this is what I'm shooting on at f2 is almost like a full frame camera at like f4 so like your your depth of field is just not as wide so for the most part and then also you try and keep their faces close and on the same range like you should never have your couple so far away like you can even see it with my hands when i have them like to the side like you know like they shouldn't be far enough away to start getting you know the separation between the folk like the focal plane but yet again on full frame that's much different so like when you're on full frame yeah you're stopping down all the time that was one of the biggest issues i had when i first started like not everything was in focus and i was always like what happened why is it not in focus and it's like well yeah because you're shooting at like 1.8 on a full frame like yeah you're gonna you're gonna miss the focus because it's like even if they're like barely apart Oh no, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Zion Crane M2 is suitable for XC3, 60 mil if you suggest it before. I've not suggested it, but yes. So I have the um, the Weeble S, I don't know if you see it back there. I use it with my XT4 and I've used it with my XT3. Um, one thing with the XT3 and everything, especially if you're shooting like 4K 30, or 4K 60, it crops in a little bit anyway. So I like to shoot with wider lenses. It helps out the whole situation. So, you know, if you're using a 23 and it crops in on it, now you're it's almost like you're shooting with a 30 or something. So yeah, the Crane M2 on a Fuji is gonna be great. I used it on the Weeble and it's awesome. Should I bring another lens for a couple? I just bring the 35. The 35 by itself is fine if you don't mind like moving around. Um, I like having a wider lens because you can get wider landscapes and things and not have to be like 50 years away from your couple. So that's one thing to think about. Um, so for instance, like if we look at all the photos here, so see like these two looks right here so I was basically in about the same spot, but this is the 23 and this is the 35. Oh, it's always so hard to match these lenses. What happened here? Hold up. Oh, the lighting's a little different too, okay. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm standing in nearly the same spot and getting a totally different photo. Or actually, I take that back. I got a little bit closer to them and I stood up. Whereas this one on the left, I'm like kneeling down and shooting up at them. And I see, I lied. That's a 35 too. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yes, I do like having a, a wider lens. This was the 23 one. That's what I'm trying to think about. So yeah, 23 versus 
you see like you're getting more here getting a little bit tighter here but I'm basically in the same spot you kind of just answered my question yeah <laughs> even though I was like totally wrong but yeah like I like having just a wider lens so I can get different views on stuff sometimes and not have to be like let me go run way back there real quick and get a wide shot my friend had an editing experience for about three years, I came to know I could edit better than him because I had a professional teacher. You <laughs> Please suggest Crane M2 or Weeble S. I actually, I've never used the Crane M2, so I can't really compare. Um, but I love my Weeble S. It's nice. I think the Crane M2, what, it mainly has, it can take heavier loads. I actually, yeah, I have no idea the difference between the two. So here comes our shot from earlier, totally blown out. White balance is all over the place. So we're gonna hit them off with some shadow save. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Hold on. Okay. Press the, I'm over here pressing the wrong keys. Hi, John. I have a D5300 and I'm currently saving. Should I buy a few new lenses? Keep saving for Fuji camera. No scheduled customers and I only have a kit lens at the moment. Um, if you want to stay on your camera, you'll definitely want to get some better lenses. But if you're looking to go ahead and upgrade, I would just say just save and wait to upgrade rather than buying new lenses because then it's like another price that you have to deal with. May as well just save it for like the final product that you're trying to get. What happened? Flow, size, feather, flow. Yeah, the flow, okay. The flow was down. I was like, why is it not painting? I thought I had lost my mind. There we go. So there's our shadow save. Uh, I think it's okay there. This whole thing is not warm enough. I use X XH1 and the IS always moves a little when I record the video. I've heard the XH1 Ibis isn't really the greatest in the world. The X-T4's Ibis is pretty legit though. Do you still shoot for fun? I worry becoming a professional might make it. Yeah, I don't really shoot for fun. <laughs> I really don't. Um, it's, it's rare that I'm shooting for fun. Um, I guess the most fun shooting I do is when I just do stuff with my family, like when we're just going around doing whatever. But yeah, I, I don't have time at this point. And a lot of that, yet again, is just because, you know, I have three kids. There's, there's just a lot. I have a lot of responsibilities. So shooting for fun, it just doesn't really happen that often. Oh, I should have... Should have synced the... Uh, brush adjustments. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back.
All right. Okay, so we synced over the brush adjustments, which they look like they almost came over. How crazy. Uh, not on this one though. Yeah, cause it's totally different on this one. But at least we have the settings about the same. Is there a way to earn money from photography at the age of 14? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could do sessions. It's the hardest, the hardest thing being that young um, is this the stipulations of making money as a 14 year old. But I mean, if you're, I don't know, if you're just doing small sessions for people, you could also do like stock photography and stuff. There's all types of ways you could. I just don't know how it works with being 14 if it's like legal. That would be the biggest thing. But you know, that gives you time to practice. You know, you can start building a portfolio and stuff for free. So that by the time, you know, by the time you're 18, you got a rocking portfolio and you're ready to go. Rather than like waiting until you're older to start taking sessions. That's at least my thought. Cause I wish I would've got started. I'm jealous of all, all of you all starting earlier. I am so jealous. I was like nearly 30 years old when I really started getting out there and trying to do stuff and, you know, make money and things. I would see all these like 20 some, 19, 20 some, yeah, doing wedding photography, making mad money and I'm always like, I just wasted all, I wasted my 20s <laughs> doing nothing. There we go, that's the whole session, I think. Let's see, metadata, find something that's not edited and there's nothing. We did it, y'all. We called and edited a full session. How long have I been streaming? About two hours, which generally I'll go faster than this if I'm not chatting with lovely folks like you all. <laughs> I was searching for videos on Fujifilm camera and I find a live video, yay! <laughs> From the same guy I was watching. What's up, welcome to the stream. We over here just editing. These photos are with the X-T4. Let's see what goodness we got in here. Look at all these good shots. There's a little, there's a little selection Do you still do music? Not as much as I'd like to. I kind of do. I still have enough of my setup and stuff. Oh yeah, y'all can, oh you can't see it. There's my keyboard back here chilling, just waiting to be used, just crying. John, please play me. <laughs> I have a music channel. It has like 8,000 subs on it. I honestly probably should pick it back up. Let me see if, let me see, let's see if the computer can handle exporting this so I can show y'all my export process. All right, so this is how it works out. This is how we do this. You also have internal voice telling you you could have done a way better. <laughs> yep. Oh, you used to watch, you used to watch my Ableton videos? <laughs> I was, I love it when people find me and they're like, hey, it's that guy. He used to do videos back in the day. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I was there once upon a time. Oh, 
All right, so select everything. Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. I paid enough for this computer. It better be able to do it. So we have a folder for them set up. I'm going to export it. I'm going to do JPEG 100% quality sRGB. I'm not going to resize it. The resolution is going to be 300 because these are the photos that I'm delivering. So I want them to be able to print these photos. So I need the pixel per inch to be at least 300. So it's a nice big print. Screen sharpening low. And then I'm going to have it export and go into exposure because that's where I do my sharpening. So all these photos you saw here had no sharpening on them at all. So Lightroom's going to export them as JPEGs and put a little bit of screen sharpening on them. And then in exposure, I'm going to put my final grain and sharpening on them there. And then we export. And we wait. Now, typically, when I was shooting with the bad internet before, this is where OBS and everybody would just give up. So we'll see. It may still give up because it's working the computer pretty hard. Yep. Encoder overloaded. Ah, are we dropping frames? We are. Oh, God, it's happening. Okay. All right. Okay. We're not, we're not going to export. <laughs> My whole stream almost gave up. It was like, please don't, don't do it. So yeah, no exporting right now. Would you be able to do a behind the scenes session similar to your behind the scenes weddings? Yeah. So I have one with an engagement session. And, you know, I can, I can link y'all to that real quick. It's not getting as many views as the wedding ones, but I do have a behind the scenes and it's not as like, I didn't have a whole videographer. So it's one of the GoPro on the shoulders. It's nice when I have a videographer hanging out with me. Hopefully I can get more of those videos at some point. Oops. So here's my behind the scenes of an engagement session. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'll get a, um, an actual videographer for you all at some point and bring them along for a, uh, like an engagement session or something from Jamaica in my thirties and learning photography. Cool. Yeah. There's no time to say, start whenever you want to get up in there. All right, so let's go back to photo mechanic and let me call this other thing I need to do. So we're going to close this out. We're going to open up a new contact sheet. And this time will be Mary and Dan. I actually, I might step off for now though, but I do have to go ahead and call this stuff as well. Blender, I've heard of it before, but I'm not totally familiar. Yeah, I'm not totally familiar with it. But yeah, these are all the sessions I did this year. It's actually a decent little amount, so not too bad. This was, um, this is one of my New York Times sessions I did. Yeah, these shots here were my favorite. This was like on the side of a post office. So no one usually even stands here, but I saw it and it was in shade and it was just so good. I was like, this is gonna be a great portrait. Oh yeah, here's where I edited viewers photos. If y'all caught that at all, it was a good stream. And then here goes that wedding I did for the full wedding day video. Do you keep every single session after you send them to the clients? I do. So I export all the JPEGs and I save those on one hard drive. I keep the raws on another hard drive and I keep that at least for a year or two. 
Um, after a while, the RAWs take up too much space, so I delete the RAWs, but I always keep the JPEGs. I try to keep the JPEGs forever because they don't even take up that much space. Also, too, with this um, this little boy right here, this JPEG Mini, you're able to truncate files like pretty small. Um, generally, what I'll do is like, I can even be extra about it. So let's let's say, so I have my folder here. I'll just take all of 2020 and throw it in there. And these are my JPEGs. So it's going to go through now all my 2020 stuff. And it's just going to try and make them smaller. But the thing is, it makes the files smaller, but it keeps the quality of the files. So it's actually really good. It saves a lot of space, too. So I'm going I'm to let that run. I'm going to take it off to the side here. Once it's done, we'll see how much space it saved me. What monitor are you using? This is the BenQ 3200 PD3200. I think that's what it's called. I think that's what it's called. Yes, the BenQ PD3200Q. It is a 1440p monitor. So not 4K, but honestly, like, as a photographer mainly, I don't really need 4K. This thing's working. Let's see what it gets me to. But yeah, this was a fun wedding. This is like right before the pandemic really popped off too. So really happy the couple had like got to have a normal wedding day basically. And not one of these like smaller weddings. I actually just dropped off their wedding album yesterday. This thing is still going. So many photos. So this is the other session that I have to finish editing at some point. But this is basically an anniversary party. So I did this a couple days ago, small little anniversary party with a small group of people. Um, this guy, he actually watches the channel as well. That's how he found me, is from watching YouTube stuff. He shoots Fuji as, as well, he's just kind of hobbyist. But um, yeah, he was like, hey man, we're having an anniversary. It's his 25th anniversary, so I got to hang out with him and his family. It was a good time. Do previous clients ever keep in touch with you? Oh yeah, I, I still talk with a lot of my clients. Some of my clients even, we get really close, um, basically like on friend level. Um, sometimes I'll use them even for sessions and stuff. So there's a lot of things. So yeah, I saved 440 megabytes just now so that's that's pretty decent it's pretty good um jpeg mini is definitely worth it um i've done it before like on my whole hard drive and saved like gigs of space so but yeah y'all that's gonna be all for today 
I finished my one session, which is good for now. I'm gonna go ahead and export it and everything. So thanks for hanging out on the channel. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and maybe I'll make a Discord at some point for anyone who wants to hang out and share photos and just chat and stuff like that. Um, let me answer these last couple of questions real quick though. Can you explain how can it's profile your photos? Are you talking about like the the preset and how they look? That's just my um, that's my personal preset that I use that I sell. You can find it here as well. All right, folks. Thanks again for hanging out. I'm gonna go do some other stuff. I always have emails I have to answer. I have so much to do all the time. And I have to plan out these videos for all these products I have to do. So definitely sub to the channel for more stuff. Hang out for some more live streams. And also leave comments on the live stream. Just let me know if you like this stuff. I'll do it more often. And yeah, I will check you all out next time. All right. Peace.